Okay, great. So, welcome everybody to our uh, mini symposium on peridynamics and its applications. It's nice to see you here in beautiful Algero. So, you will have two separate actual sessions. One is one this uh, morning, and also there will be another one on uh, Wednesday afternoon. So, basically, during this first session, you will have four. Uh, different presentations and the first one actually will be given by myself actually in the original program Professor Konstantin Naimanko was supposed to actually give the first presentation but he couldn't make today so he will present on Wednesday so we kind of changed the order so I thought that it may be a good idea actually to give you some background about peridynamics in case some of you may not be suitable basically uh, familiar with uh, this new formulation. So after that, you know, I'm hoping that the other presentations can be much more meaningful. So what I will do is I will try to actually briefly present the past, present, and future of paradigms. Just a brief outline. So basically, I will just briefly explain what paradigmic theory is all about, and I will briefly talk about the, its history. And I will also emphasize some current development, two main important areas of paradynamics. One of them is related to multi-physics applications. The other one is a new concept that we call paradynamic differential operator. And also I will just briefly emphasize some future directions and finish my talk with final remarks. So what is paradynamics? So basically paradynamics is a new continuum mechanics formulation. And why we are kind of claiming that it's a new formulation? Because this formulation is different than other continuum mechanics formulations which are currently available. The main difference is basically we are using integral equations as opposed to mainly partial differential equations. And since we don't have any derivatives in space in this formulation, everything is basically in the form of integrals. This formulation is very suitable for predicting discontinuities such as cracks. And you know, compared to some other traditional crack prediction basically approaches, actually this approach does not require any sort of crack growth law. So if, as you will see, it is pretty actually, uh, or the definition of failure is pretty straightforward. And also we can as we can have as many cracks as possible. I think this is one of the important aspects of paradigmics so that we can model very sophisticated basic problems as you can see in this slide. So basically, since we are talking about continuum mechanics, you know, we need to basically, as you know, uh, paradigms in continuum mechanics formulation as well. So it is based on the same assumptions as other continuum mechanics formulations are basically are based on, and the assumption is the body or structure that we are analyzing it's continuous, and it's made of small, small basic volumes that we call material points. And at the end of today, basically the goal is just to find out how each material point will uh, kind of change its position under external loading conditions. So as a result, of, as a result of basically change in positions, as you know, material points, they, they will start deforming and so on, and stresses and, you know, this type of parameters, they will start basically, start appear in, within, the, uh, within the body. And there are many actually continuum mechanical formulations available in the literature, and I believe that in this particular uh, conference, we will see many of them, many different ones. But the one that I want to refer to is the probably the most popular one, which is which was proposed by Cauchy. So basically, according to Cauchy's formulation, he just made an assumption that each material point is interacting with the material points in its nearest neighborhood. So there should be a contact basically between material points so that they can interact with each other. And he used this concept of traction vector 
to transfer information from one material point to another one. So basically, this is the kind of the assumption that he has made in his formulation. And then he used basic physics laws, starting from global balance of linear momentum, and he introduced this new parameter that we usually use, stress, and he relate that stress parameter to the traction vector, which, as I said, which is used to transfer information from one material point to another one. And basically, by using these two equations, we can obtain the equation of motion of a particular material point. And this equation is very well known. You know, I believe that you guys are very much familiar with. Basically, we have on one side inertia term, and then on the other side, we have the derivative of the stress tensor and then body load. So it's a beautiful equation, you know, people have been solving this equation and using this equation for almost 200 years to solve many challenging problems. But the problem, you know, the, or the issue about this equation is the derivative in space. So basically, as you see, we have this derivative of space in terms of, or with respect to our stress tensor, and the stress tensor is basically is related to displacement. That means that we need to calculate the derivative of the displacement. And what's happening is, you know, for problems which contain discontinuities like cracks, this term cannot be basically obtained right away. So because of that basically problem, people, you know, they develop different strategies to calculate that term. You know, they introduce linear fracture mechanics and so on. And basically, it is kind of a, from my point of view, that people introduce some type of a patch to the formulation. So whenever they encounter a problem regarding these continuities, they try to use some additional, basically, uh, approach. So rather than actually using a patch or an additional approach, you know, Dr. Steven Silling from Sandia National Lab he said that if the problem is coming from the form of equation that we are using, which is the equation that I just showed you, he said that, you know, why don't we change the, the, the type of equation? So that, we, that basically we don't need to worry about discontinuities. And also he expanded the assumption that Cauchy has made. So rather than material points in, basically in contact, interacting with each other, in his formulation, all material points inside the basic the body can interact with each other. It's kind of similar to molecular dynamic type of basic logic. But here still we are, you know, using continuum approach rather than atomistic basic approach. So, and the way that he kind of defined the interaction between two material points is he introduced something that we call peridynamic forces. So basically F is the force that this Material point x prime is exerting on x, and f prime is the force, peridynamic force that x is exerting on material point x prime, and they don't need to be in close contact. And the interaction between two material points we call them as bonds, basically. So these are kind of some important terminologies within the formulation. And then what he did is basically he just replaced the problematic term which contains derivatives in space with an integral. So now, basically, trying to cal rather than trying to calculate that divergence term, we are trying to calculate an integral. And since that integral is not suffering from discontinuities, so basically displacements can be either continuous or discontinuous, that equation is still valid. So basically, this is kind of bring the advantage of uh, peridynamic formulation. So depending on how these material points are basically interacting with each other, we classify peridynamics in different forms. One of the most general forms is something that we call non-ordinary state-based peridynamics. And according to this approach, basically, the interaction forces between two material points can be in any direction. So basically, they are not limited to a particular direction. But if we make an assumption that the interaction forces are along the basic the interaction direction or bond direction, then we call this as ordinary state-based paradynamics. And we make another assumption that these forces, they, are, they have equal, equal magnitude and they are opposite to each other. We call this as bond-based paradynamics. And bond-based paradynamics is basically the most uh, kind of basic paradynamic formulation 
it is pretty simple, but it has certain limitations. So if you don't want those limitations, then we need to use the state-based or advanced paradigmatic approaches. So again, some other basically important parameters that we are using. One is horizon. So basically, horizon is the length scale parameter that we are using in the formulation. Although all material points, they can interact with each other, we define this range of interaction that we call horizon, so that only within that horizon or that domain, basic material points are interacting with each other. And we also have this you know, bound force that I mentioned before. And that bound force is similar to a spring basic force, but we just write this in a little bit different form. So rather than multiplying the spring constant with the change in length of the spring, we are just introducing this term of bound constant, and then we multiply this with stretch. But again, very similar definition. And bound constant is basically the material constant within this uh, basically bound-based paradynamic formulation, and it can be expressed in terms of the material constants that we are using in the classical formulation. And the stretch is basically just kind of a similar to a strain definition, so a change in length divided by the original distance between two material points. And, you know, as I said, this formulation has certain limitations, and one limitation is Poisson's ratio is limited to 0.25. So basically, if you don't want this limitation, then you need to use advanced paradigmic formulations. And how do we define failure? So this actually depends on the material system that we are working with. So especially if we are working with a brittle material, the definition is pretty simple. So what we do is we monitor basically the distance between two metal points. And if that basically stretch between two metal points exceeds a critical value that we call critical stretch, then we break the interaction between two metal points. And this is how we basically define the failure. And how do we define that critical stretch? It is based on basically fracture toughness of the material. So, you know, the formulation that I just presented, as I said, has certain limitations, bound-based paradynamics, and if you, want, if you don't want those limitations, we can use ordinary set-based paradynamics, and here we are basically taking into account the influence of all the metal points, basically within each horizon, belonging to two interactive metal points. Basically, once we do base that extension to the formulation, then we don't need to worry about the limitation of Poisson's ratio. In another common form, as I said, non-ordinary state-based paradynamics. The good thing about this formulation is we can directly incorporate the classical material models within paradynamic theory. So this is kind of a transformator between classical formulation and paradigm formulation. So basically, if you know, if you have a particle with material and definition in a classical formulation, you just apply a transformation and just finds out the corresponding paradynamic force. And how do we solve these equations? So basically, um, unfortunately, analytical solution of this integral differential equation is not very common. Instead, we are using, most of the time, meshless formulation. So what we do is basically, in simple terms, we again discretize the system in small, small volumes. And each volume is represented by a particle point, basically representing that, uh, that volume itself. And then each basic point has a an horizon. And basically, within that horizon, metal points are interacting with each other. So basically, in simple terms, we are using meshless approach to solve our equations in many cases. So after this introduction, basically, uh, is there any commercial actual software currently available? Uh, the answer is basically uh, yeah, partially yes. Basically, in Elastina, uh, they started actually implementing the paradynamic formulation within their framework. But apart from Elastina, this is the code that actually which was originated based on paradigms, which is called EMU code. And this EMU is this you know funny bird basically. And it was implemented at San Diego National Lab. And also, San Diego is another uh, 
open source software which is called LAMPS. This is a molecular dynamic software, but because of the similarity between molecular dynamics and also peridynamics, basically we can do a little, little trick that, you know, since the equations are kind of similar, we can still implement or perform peridynamic simulations as, as a molecular dynamic simulation. So basically you can use LAMPS to perform peridynamic analysis. And also, if you are very comfortable with, you know, commercial finite element software like ANSYS or Bocus and so on, you can just cheat the software. So it's basically, there is a way to cheat the software in a way that we can first form nodes within the system representing our metal points, and in between we can use truss elements or link elements by just considering the horizon, so that we can try to represent the peridynamic equation as in the bottom form. And then we must be use things like killing the elements and so on. If you want to break a particle element, we can represent basically failure. So basically, in simple terms, actually you can, although uh, implementation of peridynamics in commercial finite element software is limited, you can still basically implement, you make your implementation in that framework. And this is what actually what it will look like. So as you see one meter point there, is interacting with many meter points inside this horizon. And since every point has many, many of these interactions, at the end, you will see a network of elements, basically, and they are connecting to the to many nodes. And now, basically, we can use paradynamics after making all these implementations to analyze very sophisticated, basic the fracture problems and, you know, people have been using paradynamics for the last more than 20 years now to analyze, as I said, very complex problems, especially to predict failure. So, just a little bit about history. So, sometimes people are asking about where the name is coming from. Actually, it is coming from Greek language. So, peri means horizon. So, as I mentioned, horizon is an important parameter in the formulation and dynamics is force, basically. It is kind of a combination of these two words. And the formulation was originated in 2000 by Dr. Stewart Selling, and this is the way the first paper appeared in the literature. It's a very well-cited paper. And as you see, the interest on paradynamics is, is based, basically exponential, so every year, actually, uh, the number of publications are increasing uh, significantly, in especially in different parts of, parts of the world. Um, for instance, United States and China, I think they are the uh, main countries focusing on paradynamic basic formulation or theory. And these are the two, the first two PhD theses done on paradynamics. One of them was in 2005 completed by Marcus Zimmerman at MIT, and the other one was completed in 2007 by uh, Koshik Dayal, and basically uh, at Caltech. And um, probably around uh, maybe 15 years ago or so, Boeing was trying to develop this new airplane, Boeing 787, and at that time they used paradynamics in their basic design, work, design framework. So this really, this project helped significantly to improve the, the formulation. And this is again a very important paper of paradynamics, which was written by again Dr. Seling and Dr. Ascari. Basically, it's a very fundamental paper, so if you would like to actually learn more about paradynamics, this is a very good paper to start with. And another, you know, I was talking about the state concept, and that state concept was introduced to remove the limitations of paradynamics or original paradynamic bound based formulation. And this paper was, was introduced in 2007. And basically, from my perspective, since I have been involved in development of paradynamics almost from the beginning, and I believe that paradynamics went through all these three stages of truth. So basically, as you know, from Schopenhauer, he was saying that all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculated, 
The second is, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident, basically. So in the early days, people were finding that this is like ridiculous, it doesn't make sense, and so on. And then, after some time, people start taking very seriously. They attacked, actually, against paradigmics by saying that it is wrong, and this and that. And but now, they start accepting the theory, but they are saying that, actually, there is nothing new in here. So basically, people are saying that uh, this, whatever this paradigmics, the idea is not new. There are actually similar formulations available in the literature. So one of them is actually Navier's formulation. So if you look at actually Navier's original 1821 publication, you can see that his formulation, the way that he was describing, is very similar to Bond-based paradigm formulation. So it was very interesting that at that time, he, his basic his approach was in similar lines to, to paradigms. But unfortunately, he didn't have a computer. And what he did is he started with an integral formulation and he converted integral formulation to a partial differential equation because I believe that he couldn't solve those, this, the integral formulation. And later on, of course, as my friend Francesco and Luca, you know, they published several work of Piola. Again, you know, they showed that Piola's formulation is again very similar to uh, peridynamic formulation. So basically, if you are wondering the, about the details of that basic discussion, so please refer to their publications. And also in 1967, Kroner basically introduced this non-local concept. And as you see, basically, his formulation is, again, very similar formulation to paradynamics. You know, there is both kind of a combination of a classical term and a very similar definition of, basically, interaction between metal points. Again, this is, I think, a very similar formulation to paradynamics. And also, Rogula introduced uh, his approach. Again, if you look at you know, his equation of motion, you can see that it is also very similar definition. So basically, I'm not saying that you know, paradigms is totally different with respect to other existing approaches. There are many similarities. But also, at the same time, there are some differences between different formulations. And for the last, basically, 20 years or so, uh, there are actually m many publications appeared in the literature. Uh, the first book was actually appeared in 2014 by myself and also uh, Professor Manias from University of Arizona. And after that, basically, there are some other uh, books which are currently available in the literature. And even the form is the one. The, the first book was trans translated to Chinese since there is a significant interest, basically, in China about paradigms. There is also a journal now, basically, within Springer Framework, the based journal of paradigms and non-local modeling. So actually, uh, so far, I think it is doing well. So I'm hoping that uh, soon we will also get uh, our first impact factor. There is also basically a uh, website available for people who are interested in paradigms. So it's www.paradigms.org. And basically in this website, we are just trying to share some information about beginners and also trying to bring community, community together. And also in 2019, we introduced the first center Paradynamics Center focusing mainly on paradynamics research at the University of Strathclyde. So now, basically, in this center, many researchers are basically focusing on uh, many different areas of paradynamics. So, with this basically in information about the past or history of paradynamics, let me just briefly talk about what's currently happening. One important area is multi-physics applications of paradynamics. So, like finite element formulation, the original basic the focus of paradigms was just purely mechanical analysis or, or structure analysis. But as you know, you know, depending on the problem, we may need to couple different fields. So basically, we need to solve the multi-physics problems, which we basically we experience in different fields. For example, oil and gas, aerospace industry, and so on. So basically, to formulate the problem, we need to couple 
for example, mechanical field with the thermal field and so on. And by considering this, now, in addition to the formulation that I just presented, there are also paradynamic formulations now for different fields. For example, as you see, this is the paradynamic form of thermal diffusion analysis. So rather than using, again, or trying to solve a partial differential equation, we can solve this paradigm formation in integral form so that all these basically different physical fields, they, are, they have the same type of basic formulation. You can see that now we have thermal bonds between metal points, basically, that's describing the diffusion, thermal diffusion between metal points. And we apply this formulation for a basic the challenging problem failure in electron packages. So basically for electron packages, moisture is a big problem. Since electron packages mainly made from polymers, they absorb moisture from the environment. And what's happening is during the manufacturing process, moisture evaporates and then it basically causes, causes cracking in packages. So to solve this problem, we need to couple actually thermal field and uh, moisture field with the mechanical field. So it's a very complex problem, so we need to couple, as you see, uh, thermal diffusion analysis, moisture analysis, and also mechanical analysis. So they are basically terms which are coupled to each other. But now, within just single paradigm framework, actually we can solve the entire problem. And this was actually done by, uh, for a project supported by Samsung Electronics. And here, as we try to find out how the cracking occurring in a electronic basic package and we were able to basically couple these uh, four different fields and try to basically predict failure in electronic packages. So there is this other term, important concept of paradigm differential operator. So please let me just briefly describe what this is all about. So for instance, this is just an example about the application of paradynamics for litiation induced damage. So basically if you are trying to calculate the cracking when we are charging basically our batteries, lithium ion batteries, we need to solve this coupled equation. So we have this base diffusion equation at the top, and then we have this mechanical equation at the bottom. So it's very easy to, you know, so far based on our experience, deal, deal with the second equation. But the first equation is it's a coupled equation, and it's not easy to come up with the paradigmic formulation for that equation. So for such problems, basically, so if you want to now formulate that somehow that partial differential equation within paradigm framework, we can use paradigm differential operator. And what paradigm differential operator is doing is, if you know the classical equation in par partial differential equation form, we can try to find the corresponding paradigm form. And by using basically Taylor expansion, we can show that you know the derivatives, the first derivative, second derivative, or any order of derivative basically can be converted to a paradynamic form if we can calculate some functions. Since I have limited time, basically, I will not go into detail. But here, as you see, we can, in this particular example, we can con we converted the wave equation at the top to the paradynamic form, basically, by doing this transformation based on paradynamic differential operator. So just some future areas for paradynamics. Uh, so basically, paradynamics, because of its length scale parameter, can be applied in multi, in different scales. So basically, we can couple many different scales within, this, within a single formulation. I think it can be a very, basically, suitable framework. And because also its equations are similar to molecular dynamics, I think it can also be advantages by coupling with, with molecular dynamics. And also now, editing manufacturing is very important. So basically, paradynamics can be very suitable for material design and additive manufacturing basic applications. And also artificial intelligence. So basically, th there are already some papers available in the literature where we kind of couple paradynamics and also machine learning. This is also a pretty good area that we, you can, we can look at. So as a final remarks, is paradynamics is an alternative formulation for computation mod modeling of future problems. And also, it is not limited to structural mechanics, but also it can be applied to many different fields. So with that one, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.